guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to discuss something that I've been promising to show you guys for quite a while and that is how to instigate upwards scapular rotation. Now I have a good amount of patients who when I show them proper scapular mechanics they're able to do so fairly easily with the proper guidance. However, there is a fairly fairly small amount of those patients who severely struggle. And the most common reason for that, guys, is that as I show them how to upwardly rotate the scapula, which FYI involves the lower angle of the scapula tipping out and the upper, well, the diacromion elevating. So you get the pivoting of the scapula. As this happens, the scapula should gently AB duct, slightly elevate, and it should pivot upwards. This is mainly done, well, it depends on which angle you're doing it. If you're coming forward into flexion, there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of serratus, middle trap, and lower trap. If you're going into AB duction, however, guys, it's going to be mainly upper trap and lower trap. And some people have an easier time going forward. Other people have an easy time going out to the side. And then again, other patients have a fairly easy time coming up, but they struggle coming down eccentrically without losing control. And then there are some patients also that struggle to come up, but then they are fairly easily coming down without collapsing that scapular positioning. So today I want to show you how what, what that looks like when it's done. Well, I will try to replicate the mistakes of my clients, try to show you how it's done wrong, and then show you how you should do it correctly and this is something that you really have to practice over and over and over and over you have to, you've got to use a mirror or some kind of camera setup so you can evaluate yourself to get those angles right and once you get it right just keep practicing until it becomes second nature guys that's really the most important approach in my opinion in my experience to um scapular um, mechanics and well, the improvement of such. So let me show you guys how to do this. I'm also going to insert my my microphone so that the sound is not going to suck as much as the former video. So here we go. Okay guys, so I have the microphone placed finally. Let me see if I can get this angle right as well and hopefully I will be able to demonstrate this. Okay, so to instigate upward rotation, the first thing you need to know is that the, the acromion should elevate, but you should not be pulling the scapula back, guys. If you, if you pull back, you lock the scapula on the rhomboid, usually, and because the rhomboid attaches to the lower border of the scapula, you lock that lower border of the scapula in towards the spinal column, and you won't be able to upwardly rotate. You see that, guys? Because you lock it, you won't be able to, able to pivot. So what people tend to do is that they pull back, they pull back like this, and then they try to desperately pull up like this. And you can see that the scapula is elevating to some extent, but you're not getting that pivoting. So you don't want to lock your scapula back. That's not correct. Okay? You want to try to open up. Do you see that? Open up and then come up. This is upwards rotation, guys. This doesn't look that bad from the from the front, does it? But from the back, it looks like shit. You see that, guys? This is not upwards rotation. You've got to come out. We have to get that lower angle of the scapula to come out. So you open up. That's why I say in some of the other videos that it's kind of like a lat spread, although there are nuances to that. Open up a little bit and then elevate. Most people, well, not that's not correct, not most people, but a lot of patients who have this problem, most patients who have this problem, they tend to pull back like this. And then they try to elevate using either the rhomboid or the levator scapula. As you come up, let me see if you can see this. As you come up, if you're going into flexion, guys, if you're coming forward, remember that the glenoid fossa should follow the movement of the arm. 
Okay? What does that mean? As you come forward, the scapula should wrap around the thorax. You should abduct, protract, and then upwardly rotate off that oblique axis. Looks like this. Now, I usually say that the scapula is the first to come up, but the last to come down. Because you don't want that acromion to just collapse as you're still loaded. So you keep the scapula up and maintain it there. Do you see that, guys? You maintain it there, there until you finish the loading. Now, as you're coming into abduction, you should not have the scapula move into protraction to such an extent, or medial rotation. When we're doing abduction, it is more, it is more because, the, like I said, it follows the arm, right? The scapula follows the arm. So if your arm is going straight out, then the glenoid fossa, the socket of the shoulder, should point more or less straight out, guys. Does that make sense? Can you see this well? I hope you can. Or else I will have to redo the video. And that's probably not going to happen, guys. Let's just face it. So, scapula points more or less out to the side. It doesn't point back. It doesn't point forward. It points more or less out to the side. And then upward rotation happens. Do you see that, guys? This should not happen. This is not correct. My scapula in that position is slightly downwardly rotated. Now, you might get away with that until maybe 70 degrees of abduction or so. But if you're coming all the way up, scapula has to upwardly ro rotate to avoid subacromial impingement. Does that make sense? So abduct the scapula, sorry, the scapula for the lower angles will flow so somewhat abduct. Slightly abduct with the scapula and then instigate upward rotation. You see that? Don't pull back like this. It's not going to work. Obviously, you cannot pull forward either. That's not going to work either. Like that. Can you see that? There, upward rotation. And even more upward rotation if you're going all the way up. And, and look here, as I showed you earlier, scapula is the first to come up and the last to come down. Do you see that, guys? So, for example, if I'm doing, let's say, a military press, you get your scapula up. Can you see that? I think you can. You get your scapula up to here. Push up. Keep the scapula up. You see that? Keep the scapula up. You do not want the scapula to go down like this for every rep. Horrible technique. Causes injuries, and it causes, uh, and it causes you to be weaker as well because it's not a strong foundation for the loading. I think I covered the most common mistakes. I hope I was able to show you how this should be done. Go ahead and try. This is what you have to work a lot on. You need to have some kind of visual feedback when you're practicing this. Use a camera or use some kind of mirror system to help you to get this done, guys. Comments in down below. If you have any questions, I'm sure you will have. Let me just quickly also show you the bench pressing um, positioning. So like I said, it's like a semi lat spread like stuff like this, you keep your shoulders a little bit up and you push like this. You push like that from the side. You see that guys? That's how you do the pushing. You should not do this. You stay there, push from like that. Hope that is helpful, my friends. Have a great day.